I, I was reading this yesterday. I won't share all of them with you because it was a whole list, but, but have you ever got a gift you don't like? Come on, we're in church, it's confession. You're like, ah, oh, I wish I would have given you a little list to work on or something. A gift you don't like? Uh, I'm only gonna give you a couple. These are some responses that you can use if you get a gift that you really don't like. Uh, here's three of them. Number one, well, well, well. This next one is awesome. Uh, response to gifts you don't like. Um, I really don't deserve this. <laughs> I, re I really, uh, I really don't deserve this. One last one. Gifts you don't like. Responses to gifts you don't like. Uh, this is perfect. This is perfect for wearing around the basement. Uh, <laughs> Matthew chapter number two. Matthew chapter number two. I want to read three verses of Scripture, beginning to read at verse number 13. And I'm reading down through and including verse 15. Matthew chapter 2, beginning to read at verse 13, says, Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there. I want you to notice that today. And remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child, notice this, and destroy him. That word destroy by definition means that he wants to ruin, to annihilate, to vanquish. He said, I, I know you have this bouncing baby boy and it seems so precious. What a gift. But I want you to take your gift and I want you to get away because Herod wants to destroy the child. It's as if heaven showed up and all of hell broke loose. When you look at our final two verses today, verse 14 and 15, it says, and he arose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained, or he stayed there, until the death of Herod. That word until, he stayed there until the death of Herod. Most people believe that was several years, not a few days or weeks or months, years. He stayed there until the death of Herod. Then, the Bible says at that point, after he had endured Egypt, if you would, he had survived Christmas, at that point, then it was fulfilled. There are times in our lives where we don't know everything that's happening. And maybe today, you're in a moment just like that. That you have gifts, you have God's blessings, you have some amazing things happening, but the truth of the matter is you don't know all the details. I have a couple of gifts. I have a couple of gifts up here on the stage that Jenny wrapped it's my assistant, and, and gifts, a lot of times, we see the bow, we see the wrapping paper, but we don't always know what's on the inside. My littlest ones, nine and eight, Ellie and Micaiah, they, they are constantly, even last night, they are constantly wanting to try to figure out their gifts. I had gifts in the back seat of my truck, and last night I pulled in the driveway and I asked Mikai and Ellie to come out and carry some stuff in the front seat, and as they're coming out, I'm telling them four or five times, don't look in the back seat, don't look in the back seat, don't look in the back seat. What is Ellie and Micaiah doing while they're like trying to reach for the stuff in the front seat? No joke, they're like, what do you want me to carry? And the whole time I'm watching Micaiah's eyes, wanting to see in the back seat. I heard Jalen, my middle daughter who's 15, she's uh, in the car the other day, and Andrea and a, and a few uh, was in the car, Chloe, and I hear them talking in the car. I didn't say anything, but I hear them talking in the car 
about how they enjoy trying to figure out Christmas, search and sneak, or whatever they, they're doing to try to find the gifts. And I don't say anything, but I'm connecting dots in my mind because Angel and I, every year, have a constant suspicion that our kids are coming into our closet, uh, they're looking behind doors, they're checking under beds, because they're trying to see if they can figure out the gift. Angel and I have gone so far, we'll close the door, we've gone so far as, as to put something behind the door Because when I get home, I want to check and see if that's been pushed up against the wall, then I know, even when I told you, don't come in here, I know that one out of the four, and Jalen the other night, she's on my radar for sure now. (laughs) Micaiah is laying with me in bed last night, that's my boy, he's eight. He's laying in bed with me last night, and Angel and I had gone our separate ways yesterday to to look for a few last-minute gifts, and and Angel's like, let's lock the door, uh, let's lock the door before we leave to keep them out, and and so I get home uh, yesterday and and couldn't even find the opener. Her and I haven't talked about this, but I couldn't find the opener, and I'm going around the house and trying to find something to shove in the door handle to open it, and so anyway, I'm laying in bed with Micaiah last night, and I said, I said, buddy... Have you, because one of the bags that I put over by, by our nightstand is, is open, and I double knotted it, and I, I'm like, buddy, have you been going through the gifts? Like, are you trying to sneak and find the gifts? And he's like, not today, the door was locked. <laughs> <laughs> not today. Tell the devil, no, not today, not today. Sometimes our life can look like this. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a child. That's what the angels in heaven tells Joseph and Mary. And he's going to save. I mean, I know it's not paper and bows, but it sounds so wonderful. He's going to bring peace. It's awesome. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. He's going to save. Who doesn't want saved? Who doesn't want help? The gift looks awesome. Sometimes in life we don't know the details or the directions that comes with the gift. That we in this room today and those joining us online, you, you, could, you could stand and say, you know, I find a wife, I find a husband. What a gift, what a blessing. But, but you don't know a week from now, or a month from now, or a year from now, or 10 years from now, or 20 years, you don't know what the marriage brings. You don't know the struggles you'll face. You don't know the lost job. You don't, you don't know the times you'll sit in hospital rooms together. That, that the gift, the gift sounds good to Joseph. But Joseph, get ready. Because on the outside of the gift, when you're like, oh, wow, this sounds awesome. The call of God, purpose of God, the anointing of God. I love the wrapping, love the bow. But you don't really know until you get into it. I mean, on the outside, you, you know, you, those of you that have kids, I have four. On the outside, the wrapping and the bow, you're like looking at names and, and you're, you're designing the bedroom and, and, and you're thinking, wow, this is going to be so awesome and the first birthday and, you know, you're, you're doing all of those things. But, but when you start getting inside the gift, when you start dealing with your child who, who could potentially be rebellious, you start dealing with that son or daughter in an addiction or a habit. I know we want all the details on the front end. We think. I know you want to figure God out. You think. I I know on the front end, you want him to tell you everything about your life. But the truth of the matter is, I, I think if you knew all the details, I'm not sure you would want the gift.
If he really told you everything, Joseph, I don't know if you're going to be able to grasp and understand everything about the gift. This, ladies and gentlemen, many times is your life. On the inside, when you open it up and you begin to see the things that are inside the wrapping, I wouldn't have guessed this. I actually thought it was a box of chocolates. I didn't say it, but I thought that. Did you think that? Yeah, that's what I thought. It's wrapped and you just, the whole like, just like that like, there's like usually three chocolates in there I like, caramels and coconuts and all that other crap. I don't care. I don't know, I probably shouldn't have said crap, but you know what I mean. <laughs> have you ever opened a box of chocolates and there's like six half-bit ones that they're like, oh God, that's, no, save that for mom. Like she'll, she'll like, she'll like the orange, cream, raspberry, truffle, whatever. You don't know till you get in it. So you could be thinking chocolate and it's cologne. Right? You, you, could, you could go into like, yes, God, use me. Call a God anointing ministry. It's going to be awesome. I see chocolates. And it's not chocolates. You could be thinking all of these areas of your life and what it's going to look like. I know the Bible doesn't tell us this exactly, but I don't think Joseph and Mary in the moment, I don't think they're thinking, I'm going to Egypt. You know, they're hearing things like the Holy Spirit's going to overshadow. That sounds beautiful to me. The Holy Spirit's going to overshadow. God's going to do what only God can do. Actually, Herod's going to hate you and try to kill your kid. Sometimes what we're thinking, we want the blessing, but we don't want the bounty on the baby. We want God to do great things in our life, which he does. This babe is born, this babe grows up, he has wisdom, he, he, he has understanding. Ultimately, he says yes to the plan, he hangs on a tree, and you and I are all here today because he shed his blood and forgave us of our sins, and we are celebrating today because of that. But in between the beginning and the end and the resurrection and 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 success and saying yes, there's all kinds of moments that I would call surviving Christmas. Surviving Christmas. It's the element, it's the element of Christmas to where we sing about the good, we do kids' programs and plays about the good, we talk about the star, the shepherds, the worship, the gifts, the joy, the leaping babies that when Mary walks in, Elizabeth, her baby is like, wow, this is fantastic. We want to high five about the peace and goodwill. But I've met a lot of people over the years who don't want to be rejected at the end. They don't want to go through seasons of not getting the song or the solo or the position. Or I've met people who want to quit because life doesn't always go right. That they're like, I, I signed up for the yin. I didn't sign up for the stable. I've met those people. I've met people who want the angels and the shepherds and the wise men and the gold and frankincense and myrrh, but they don't want Herod's hate and they don't want Egypt's experience. They don't want that. It, it, it's, it's like saying, I thought it was chocolate, but it's cologne. I thought marriage was going to look like this. I thought parenting. I thought church. I thought my life. Pastor Micah, I never dreamed I would be single at this juncture or point. I never thought I would be dealing with my child at this place or position. I didn't know it was going to look like this. I wanted all of the celebration, the nativity scene. When you look at the nativity scene, you don't drive by no businesses here in town and see a guy going with a knife or a spear looking for babies to kill. Like that's not something that goes over well. You see the mom and dad and you see the gold and frankincense and myrrh and, and the shepherds and the animals and they're gonna make a movie out of it. There's no one setting up the Egypt experience out in front of their business. Because we don't always want to hear about surviving 
Christmas. But the truth of the matter is right now, someone's surviving in your row. Someone online right now is hanging on by a thread. Someone feels like Joseph, that everyone else seemingly has the peace and goodwill, but Joseph goes over two years without hearing from God again. Two years. We want to hear from God almost hourly, like God, just keep telling me you're with me, right? Like, keep telling me the peace and the happiness and the joy to the world, like everything's okay, right? Multiple years, he goes in a place that is symbolic of sin and shame and slavery. We don't always sign up for surviving Christmas. When you look at the passage of Scripture that we read, I want you to see on the screen the layout of what God told Joseph to do and what his response was. Let's say it together. In verse 13, God says, rise, take, flee. Very next verse. They don't have a committee meeting. He doesn't debate about it. Regina, he doesn't say, you know, give me a couple weeks and I'll get back with you. I like that the very next verse, it's the next day, it's out of this dream encounter. Look at his response. Rose, took, departed, remained. Let's read it again because I want you to see how, how almost perfect obedience, if you would. So sometimes in my life, I won't put the pressure on you to say this. I'll, pu- I'll put it on my own life that sometimes I want the details. Don't wrap the gift on me, God. I don't want to see the bow in the paper. You just need to tell me on the front end it's cologne. Don't, don't make me think chocolate and then turn it into cologne. I want to know now, what's life going to look like? What's the church going to look like? What's the budget going to look like? What's staff? Like, I want to know on the front end. That's not, that's not what Joseph gets. He doesn't know how long it's going to be. He doesn't know it's going to be several years. He doesn't know he's not going to have another dream. He doesn't know angels aren't going to show up or shepherd and wise men. He doesn't know any of that. He just knows that God says, rise, take, flee, remain. And when he wakes up, his response is, rose, took, departed, remained. The lesson learned for all of us Christmas Eve 2017 is God Help me to trust you in the moments I don't, misun- I don't understand, in those moments of, of misunderstanding and confusion. Help me to trust you then. Help me not just to serve you when the shepherds are showing up. Help me not just to be excited like, I exalt thee, when wise men are coming with gold and frankincense and myrrh. Help me to hallow your name when Herod's hating my kid. Help me to serve you and to follow you, even when I go long periods, when it seems like I don't hear from you. When you look at enduring Egypt or surviving Christmas, everyone say surviving Christmas. Here's what I want you to know. notice as, as we wrap up the passage is that The first thing he did was listened. He listened. He hears heaven talking, and he listened. In 2017, I think life can get so busy. TV, movies, technology, phones, billboards, and signage, and promos, and advertising, and schedules, and sports, and Revelation would say in reference to churches and time passing that we needed to be careful that we would continue to prioritize listening, listening to what the Spirit says to the church. If God talked to you today, if God said, pay for that lady's groceries in the line behind you, If God was to speak to you and say, you know what, I want you to go to that single parent and bless them today. God was to talk to you right now and say, I need you to forgive. The greatest gift for Christmas is that you would stop holding a grudge. I want you to forgive them. Right, right, right. do you hear that? You see, this whole story's for naught. This whole story is not really going to make sense in our minds if it wasn't for the fact that he listened. 
And in such a busy world of chaos and even confusion, I just want to ask you today, are you listening? The second thing we see with Joseph is not just that he listened, but that he left. He left. If we had time today to take you through all the times in the Bible that people left, I begin to make a list, and I, I won't go through all of them with you, but, but people that left boats and nets and lands and negativity, and some of them even left the, 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 the comfortable situations of family, and some of the Hall of Faith guys all left those kind of moments. Peter, in one instance, says, Lord, we left everything. That's what Peter said to Jesus, we left everything. Joseph models that, that you need to listen, and you need to leave some stuff. I know it's not New Year's, that's going to be next Sunday, but, but in this Christmas message, could Joseph's story remind us that maybe there's some things you need to leave? That, that there could be a sin or an addiction or a habit, and your, your breakthrough is going to depend on your willingness to leave. I realize it's 2,000 and some years later, but, but maybe someone listening to this message today needs to be reminded that, that when God calls you to leave a thing, that it's important that you're listening and that you obey. He listened, he left, and then he lasted. Or as the Bible said, he remained. I have shared with you the timeline for that and how it's important that you just stay you just stay, that you need to remain. You can't, Joseph, you can't get upset when you're in Egypt. You can't get upset when you're in Egypt like, God, okay, why didn't you move in two weeks? I'm ready to go. Like, uh, it's been a month. Hello, come on, God, six months. It's been a year. It's been 18 months. Hello, my husband is still... My wife is still, my child is still, my business is still like, let's go, God. He remained until. And I do feel his Holy Spirit even just saying that little line, he remained until. He remained until. I pray that this Christmas season, the Holy Spirit would sweep over this room and online. And people would make decisions to remain until, remain until. I don't know how long it's going to take until it turns, but I want you to know, God, I'll remain until. I don't know when Herod's going to die. I don't know when the attack on the babies. I don't know when that's going to take place, but I will remain until. We could have a generation. We could have a generation that wants to quit when it's not quick. But what we really need is to remain until. 10 years ago, 10 years ago this month, Pastor Ethan actually found this, this CD. Him and Jenny was going through stacks of old CDs and Pastor Ethan texts me and he's like, I found a CD 10 years ago, December, and, and he started sharing with me <clears throat> He started sharing with me that, that he was actually driving in the car and listening to this clip and, and started to, to tear up listening to this clip. And so I, I came in the next day and, and played it in the office and, and wanted to play it for you today. How many of you have ever received a word and you have not seen it come to fruition yet? It has not come to pass yet. If you've ever got a word from God, if God ever told you, that he was going to do something in your family or in your life or in your finances or in our church and it hasn't happened yet. I could raise both hands just for City Church because I've had all kinds of people that have prophesied about land and buildings and how they saw us with a thousand people and two thousand people and Bible colleges and all these things that numbered in great amount of numbers. I could raise both hands just for City Church today of words that have been spoken over just our congregation. We were in Groveport, and uh, this guy had just come from London, Dr. Jeffers, didn't know us. I've never met the guy before. He began to talk about our church, and he said, he, said I, he was the one that said, and I came home and typed it up in my laptop, but he said, I see your ministry running 2,000 people, but God said not yet. 
He said, God said to tell you that it's not going to happen yet because you need to stabilize what you have on the inside before he's going to give you that. Now, it's awesome when we can celebrate, Vicki, the words that we've received that have come to pass. But I know that there's people that are still holding on to some words that they haven't seen come to pass yet. I've had three different people that have prophesied to me through the years that I've preached in Africa. I've never been in Africa a day in my life, but I still want my word. City Church don't look like it's 2,000 people today, and our finances don't look like we just got so much, I don't know what to do with it. But I still want my word. Some of you that you have heard or you have felt that God impressed on your spirit that he was going to give you a spouse, and yet you're not even dating anyone right now. I want you to believe today I still want my word. Is there anyone today in your life that you would say, I still want my word? My hope and prayer for you is that you will listen, that if God calls you to leave, that you will leave the things holding you back, and that when you get in those places, you won't be tempted to quit or to run, but that you will last or that you will remain. Remain. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am so honored to have this opportunity to share God's love and remarkable grace with you. Maybe as you have watched the message today, you have been challenged in your heart and you're really believing there is more. God wants to do something in your life. And I would love for our team to pray with you right now. There's a number on the screen. Please take a moment, call that number. Let us pray with you that God will continue to give you the strength and give you the help as you move forward in your life. If you have prayed the prayer for Jesus to come into your heart to save you, we would love to give you a free book entitled Following Jesus. You can call that same number and we will send that book to you for free. Again, thank you so much for taking time to join us today. Each week we receive calls from all over Ohio, places like Columbus, Cleveland, Youngstown, Akron, just to name a few. We hear these amazing stories of people's hope being restored, relationships with Christ being renewed, and people really just overall being refreshed by the message. Today, we're asking you, help StorySide help Ohio. Help us to help someone in your local community. You can do that today through your giving. You can give one of three ways. You can visit our website, storysidechurch.com, you can download our app for free, or you can text the word GIVE to the number that's right here on your screen. Now, we don't have any way of being able to pay or give our way into heaven, but we can definitely help someone else get there.